All right. Life Bridge, what's going on? How you doing? How you doing? You can have your seats. So good to be in a church that's hungry, that loves the presence of God. Man, loves worship. And uh, so good to be here. And uh, I don't know about you, I sense the presence of God here. And uh, I, mean, I think God's going to do something really special tonight. Um, I think it's not an accident that we're here in church tonight. I don't think it's just a coincidence. Uh, I think we're here by divine appointment. I think God's got something for us. And uh, I think God's got something for you. And, uh, you know, I, for me, I don't really think it's, it's a matter of if God is speaking. I, I really believe that it's a question of if we're listening. So I think so many times we, we, we wonder, like, is God, is God saying something tonight? Is, is God going to speak to me? Is God going to say something? And, and, and I really don't think that's the question. I think really the question is, is are, are we listening to the thing that he's saying? Because God, God's speaking. God's speaking tonight. He wants to speak to us. It's the love of God that wants to speak. It's the overflow of God's heart that wants to speak to each and every one of us. And I believe this, everybody's leaving with a word tonight. And how many could use a word from God? Like, everybody's leaving with a word tonight. And uh, it's, it's going to be a good night. I'm so honored to be here. And uh, I brought some of my friends with me here uh, in the front row. Uh, Phil's my, one of my guys. He's been serving with me, uh, serves with me every single Sunday, travels with me me uh, with me for six years uh, man just works his works so hard for his family and and uh, in his regular job and works with us and serves and uh, we've got one of our worship leaders Caleb with us and um, two of our college students that just graduated Luke and Matthew incredible men of God um, came to check out what God's doing at Life Bridge and um, Pastor Tom thank you for all of your diligence serving the Lord and planning this church. And I know you from Pastor Brian and Meg and what they've spoke of you. And uh, I honor you and um, what you've done here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and obviously the church loves you. And I think it's really important to honor people that have sown. And in a world of increasing uh, controversy and compromise when you see generals of the faith that have stood the test of time and have served, sown, and then transitioned leadership. That is something to be honored, to be heralded, and to be celebrated. And uh, so thank you for stewarding this so well. Thank you for stewarding the gifts in Pastor Brian and Meg so incredibly well. And uh, Pastor Brian, Pastor Megan, we love you guys. And and so I do know you now, and uh, it, took, it took a couple of prophetic words, uh, but we got there, we got there, and, and uh, I'm so proud of you. Honestly, can I just, just, this is my first time here, and uh, walking in here, it is amazing what you guys have done and how beautiful it is and the renovations and the excellence. It's like, why not? Why is not everybody in Longview coming to this church? I mean, this is like, this is the place. What, what even is close to this? this? This thing, this place is amazing. And so I told my guys, I'm like, we're going home and remodeling. Like, this is, our church is pathetic. It's like, we're, we're, we're tearing out walls. I'm doing like that curved archway. I'm doing that curved archway for the kids. And it's like, you can copy my messages. I'm copying your building. And it's, that's, that's fine with me. Uh, it is an honor to be here. And uh, I feel like I, I got a word on my heart. I, I, I was preparing this week and just praying. And I, I was telling the guys, sometimes I'll just sense the compassion of God. Um, just when God wants to do something. And uh, just feel like, like a burden from the Lord. And I feel that burden. I, I just feel that compassion from God that he, that he wants to do something. And this is what I really believe. I, I believe God's going to do something in these next moments that could, could shift or alter the entire trajectory of your life. So for some of you, you came into the room and it's just like another night. But you don't know that God's already circled this date on the calendar. And this is, the, this is a moment of encounter that literally something's going to shift in your life. And you're never going to be the same again. Because that, that's how God works. I don't know if you know this or not, but there are moments where you encounter the presence of God and literally you will never be the same again. It happened to me as a 16 year old. I grew up in a pastor's family in a pastor's home, but when I was 16 years old on December 9th on a Monday night in a revival meeting, I came forward to the altar. Nobody touched me. Nobody prayed for me. But I told God, if this is all there is and I think I'm done, but if this, if there's more, 
If you got more, than, than I want it. And if there's more, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I had an encounter with God on that one night that changed my life forever. I woke up the next morning at 5 a.m., which was a miracle because I was 16 years old. No alarm. Woke up at 5 a.m., and I wanted to pray. Tore down posters off my wall, turned my room into a sanctuary, and began to seek the face of God at 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 years old. I, I started preaching in empty sanctuaries. No one asked me to preach. I just preached to empty chairs. You know, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, I, I had a fire in my heart to pursue the things of God. But it happened in a, just a normal meeting where I had a, a, an abnormal encounter. Let me just tell you, this is a normal night, but you might just have an abnormal encounter with a really loving God that will change the entire trajectory of your life. How many got faith for that tonight? It's like, man, you, you came in. I need that encounter. I need something from God. I, I want you to go, if you got your Bibles, to 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'll read it to you. It's the Old Testament. Uh, I love the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Some of the Old Testament scriptures are kind of scary. It, it's a little crazy if you read it. But 1 Samuel chapter 3 is really cool. It says uh, in verse 1, it says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. And in those days, well, I like that. You got to stand up for the word. We got some respect for the word of God in this house. I like it. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. I'm just going to read that apart again because it's really important. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. And one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Usual places usually lend usual results. The, the lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was not in the usual place. Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. It, it really matters where you lay. It really matters where you rest. It says where the ark of God was. Verse 4 says, then the Lord God called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. Holy Spirit, I just pray for these next moments together that you would open our ears and you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Lord, in these moments, use my feeble attempts to speak for you, to minister your word, word into these hearts, Lord, and let our lives be changed forever in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. 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 You can be seated. I, I, uh, I recently got an update on my, uh, on my iPhone, and um, I, didn't, I didn't know anything had changed at the beginning, um, but there was a new feature on the iPhone. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but there's a new feature, and it added focus mode on my iPhone. So, so literally, you can change the mode, and it will it'll allow or not allow certain notifications to come in. And uh, I, I didn't know. I just updated my phone, and I was going through my day like normal, and I was having the best day. I'm going to tell you why I was having the best day. I wasn't getting any notifications. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of an introvert by nature, and I was having the best day. Nobody was calling me. Yeah. Nobody was texting me. I'm, I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but it feels good. It's just a good day. I started, like, singing to myself. I, I started just feeling, feeling really good. By the afternoon, I'm like, man, this, I'm having an amazing day. By late afternoon, I started to get worried because I'm like, man, I haven't heard from my wife. I haven't heard of, you know, I hope my kids are okay. I'm, I haven't heard from my staff. I hope the church is okay. And, 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 and so I, I turned, on, turned on my phone and I realized that I had all, I mean, like 27 missed calls, 32 missed text messages. And I'm thinking, what, 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 what happened? Why, why was I not alerted? to all of these things, and I realized with one update that I turned on a mode that blocked notifications from getting through. And you know, the Holy Spirit started to speak to me that for, for many of us, it, it's not if God is speaking, it's if we can hear Him. And for many of us, we walk through our entire lives wondering if God is speaking or when God will speak, and if we had the ability 
to actually check the message center of our lives, you would see that God has been texting, God has been calling, God has been trying to get our attention. There is not silence on God's part. There is only deafness on our part. I, we, we talk to young people all the time, and, and young people have a tendency to, to talk about this, this silent season that God might be in. Well, Pastor, God just has me in a silent season. God's just being silent. God, God's not silent. You might be deaf, but God's not silent. You, you know what I found to be true is that God's always speaking. In fact, my dad used to teach me this, that the voice of God is like an FM radio station. Anybody remember it, like FM radio? If you tune in, it's always speaking. It's not a matter of if it's on, it's if I'm tuned in. And if I'm tuned in, then it's always speaking. This is what the voice of God is. The voice of God is always speaking. And this is what I found to be true about God's voice. When I can't hear him, I can read him. So there is no excuse for me to ever be without the word of God. And this is the powerful thing, thing about God's word is God's word makes room for God's work. The word of the Lord makes room for the work of the Lord. This is why the word of God is so powerful. Because it's God's word that announces what he's about to do. God's always done it all throughout the scripture, all throughout history. Is God always announces what he's about to do. In creation, he didn't just create. He spoke, and there was light. All throughout your Bibles, you see God speaking and creating, speaking and moving. You see Jesus speaking. You see this power of the Word of God that announces the work of God. In, in our text in 1 Samuel, it says, In those days, the Word of the Lord was, was rare. There were not many visions. In the message translation, it says, this was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard and rarely seen. The ESV says the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. The word of the Lord was rare. They were living in a time when no one was hearing. No one was seeing. And I'm concerned that we live in a time that although God is speaking, that we have people that cannot hear or cannot see what God is doing. Uh, That we live in a time that even as believers, as Christians, as the church of Jesus Christ, we're concerned with what the world is concerned about. We're in fear with what the world is in fear about. We, we, We struggle with what the world struggles with because we cannot hear what God is saying. Do you, do you know that you would, you would worry way less about tomorrow's, you would wor- worry way less about today's attack if you knew about tomorrow's victory? Yeah. Well, the only way that you can know about tomorrow's victory is if you hear God's word about tomorrow. And if you could hear God's word about tomorrow, then you could have faith today. So instead of stressing about, out about the attack today, you could have faith in the attack today because you know that you're promised a victory tomorrow. But for many of us, we can't see beyond the natural. We can't see beyond what is right in front of our eyes. And because we can't see it, then we can't believe it. And because there's no word of the Lord, we can't have faith for the work of the Lord. And so we have no widespread vision. People can't hear the voice of God. And that's why COVID hits America and the church is just as in much at just as much in fear as the world is. Because we can't hear the voice of God. That's when controversy hits our world, we stress out just like the world does because we can't hear the voice of God. When tragedy hits our home, we stress and we fear and we're anxious just like because we can't hear the voice of God. It said in verse 2, one night Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Usual place. Usual place. Everything in your life is trying to get you to embrace comfort and to find a usual place. Anything you do great for God is going to push you out of comfort. 
Anything you do great for God is going to push you out of the comfort zone and into a faith zone, which is very uncomfortable. If you're going to do something great for God, it's going to require you to get out of what is comfortable and into what is uncomfortable. And it says Eli was sitting in his usual place. Well, Eli was a prophet. Eli had heard the word of the Lord. Eli had spoken for God in the past, but over time he became old, he became complacent, and he became usual. It says that as he was there in his usual place that his eyes were becoming weak. You know why we don't have vision? Because we stay consistently in usual places. If you consistently stay in usual places, you'll consistently see the usual things. The reason that you can't have vision for a new day or for a city to be saved or for your family to be turned around and turned upside down by the power of God is because we're in the usual thing. We're doing the usual stuff. He says his eyes were becoming weak because he was in his usual place. Usual places yield usual results. The usual place represents complacency. And usual will always get you usual. It's interesting that Eli is in the usual place and Samuel is in the presence of God. It says he laid at the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. So you've got Eli who's in usual with no vision. You've got Samuel in presence who's hearing the voice of God. It's not about if God's speaking. It's if you are in proximity of hearing his voice. The reason you can't hear his voice might be because you're so complacent and so usual that you've never stepped into his presence or into a place of prayer or into a rhythm of consecration where you can hear him because he's, he's speaking. Is this too much? Y'all good? In the usual place, it's usual results. Churches that are usual stay usual. They stay in usual places. They stay in safe places. They stay in the boundaries. But I'm telling you, God's raising up churches that are not content with just being little churches in little boundaries. But God's raising up churches that are taking ground, that have the faith to believe for city transformation, that have the faith to believe for signs and wonders and miracles. But it's not just pastors and not just leaders but it's churches that say we have to get out of usual it can't just be how it's always been I've got to get to the place of presence I've got to get to the place where I can hear his voice Isaiah 43 verse 18 says forget the former things do not dwell on the past see I am doing a a new thing now it springs up. When? Now. now. Now it springs up. Do you not? Per- so it's happening. The question is not if God is doing it. The question is, can I perceive it? Yeah. It says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Yeah. It's, it's happening. Yeah. God's doing something. Yeah. You know what's interesting? When God moves, it, it looks different than what we think. Isn't that true? Yeah. Man, we want to see miracles. You know, you, know, you know why you need a miracle? Because you have a problem. Right. Man, I was, I was going to see a breakout of healings. Well, you know why we need healings? Because we have sickness. So, so, so the, the, the power that we want to see is always an answer to a problem that we have. So we want to see the power of God. And we want to see God do all these things. But in order for God to do those things means that there's got to be stuff. And for many of us, our churches, our families, our gatherings are too safe. It's usual. Anything that makes us uncomfortable, we don't want to do. I don't want to pray that long. I don't want to step out of my comfort zone that much. I don't like the way that's done. Friends, you might have to get out of usual and have a consistent rhythm in a presence place. You might have to get before God. You might have to fast for the first time. You might have to begin a rhythm of prayer where you begin to be on your face before God and begin to seek Him like you never have before. And not just rely on your pastors or leaders to do it for you. But say, no, this is a church thing. This is a life bridge thing. This is an us thing. We're going to do it together. Because we're not satisfied with usual. We want to hear the voice of God. 
Think, think about this. Think about this. What if pastor was preaching? And he begins to preach about what God's speaking. And instead of it being an announcement to you, it's confirmation to you. Because God's already been speaking to you because you've already been in a place of presence. So instead of him trying to convince you of what God's saying, you get to stand up and cheer about what God has already said. Can I just tell you as a pastor, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. To try to talk people in to what God is doing all the time. And your favorite people in the whole world are the people that are committed enough to get with God and to hear his voice and to have his heart. And when you announce something, it's not a, oh, wow, that's a surprise. But that's what God was already saying. Pastor, I'm with you. You said take the city. God told me we're taking the state. So let's go. You, you, you have faith that's bigger than his. That only happens not from you just being a positive person. That happens from being in the place of presence. It, it happens by learning to hear the voice of of God. Nothing is more important than hearing what God is saying. I felt led tonight to challenge each and every one of us to hear the voice of God. To, to, to not just put it off on someone else. Maybe you're a new believer. Maybe you didn't even know that God spoke. But I want each and every one of us to know that not only does God speak, but that you can hear him. I, I feel the mandate tonight to make sure that you knew that it's easier than you think it is to hear the voice of God. And in fact, you can do it outside of this building in your daily life that you can hear the voice of God, that you can walk with God, that you can commune with God, that you can hear him. And when you begin to hear him, it will change everything about the way that you live. Jeremiah 23 verse 29 says, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. That's powerful. He says, it's not like my word like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. You know, if you want to see the power of God, then you need to know the word of God. Because if God said it, God's going to do it. It's not a question of, man, I wonder what God's going to do. If God said he's going to do something, then you just get behind that. Because if God said he's going to do it, Jeremiah says he's watching over his word to see that it is fulfilled. So if I want to be on God's side, I'm just going to, going to figure out what God said. And whatever God said, I'm going to get behind because eventually what God said, God's going to do. So where I'm going to set up camp is wherever God said something. And if God said it, then I'm believing God is going to do it because the word of the Lord makes way for the work of the Lord. Now, let me just talk about this for a second. Hearing the voice of God, we can preach about it and we can get really fired up about we can hear and what God is saying. But, but, but to hear the voice of God, you have to practice hearing. The, the voice of God is like a muscle. The more you listen, the stronger it gets. If you go to the gym once every six months, I would, I would imagine you're a little sore and not in great shape. Some of us, we listen to God once every six months. And this is why there's not a consistent rhythm. This is why you're not ripped spiritually. It's because you need some consistency in your hearing. And when you hear him consist, when you listen consistently, the muscle of hearing God grows and it becomes easier and easier. You know, it's interesting when you train, if you're training for a marathon or you train for some type of lifting or fitness competition, the things that are really difficult at first become fairly easy as you move forward in your training. Did you know hearing the voice of God is the same exact way? In the beginning, you're like, there's no way I could do that. <laughs> but, if, but eventually, the voice of God becomes so regular. It becomes so automatic. It becomes so daily. It becomes so, it becomes so easy. And some of you are just, you're hearing me even tonight. It's like, man, I don't know. Hearing the voice of God, even that concept sounds foreign. Not only, I, I understand it sounds foreign, but not only does it, does it seem like way out there, but it's possible to learn it and to hear it even tonight. In fact, I believe this supernaturally that every single person tonight is going to hear 
a word from God. That's not to freak anybody out. That's to build your faith to let you know that God loves you so much that he doesn't want you just to sit there in the silence of your usual place. But tonight as we go into the presence of God, you are going to hear the loving voice of God speak right to you. You want to see our city transform? Then we begin to hear the voice of God. You want to see your family change? Then we begin to hear the voice of God. You want to see your marriage turned upside down? Then we begin to hear the voice of God. You want to see success in your business? Then we begin to hear the voice of God. Every element of our lives have to be integrated with our faith life. This, this segregation of faith life and everyday life is hypocrisy. Our, our faith life was meant to be congruent with the, there is no pastor Dustin, dad Dustin, husband Dustin, sports Dustin every day. That's hypocrisy. I, I, one of my pet peeves in my church is when I have people that come up to me and they say, hey, pastor, like if you ever need somebody, just like let your hair down with. I'm your guy. If you ever need somebody, just like be yourself with. Listen, if there's another version of me than up here, then I shouldn't be up here. I'm human. I make mistakes. Your pastor's human. He makes mistakes. But friends, if there's another version of us, that's hypocrisy. And we have to have congruence. Our faith walk is not something we do in this building and then we leave and we're something different. We have got to integrate this faith walk with our everyday walk. So in our practical ins and outs of life, we hear the voice of God. And when you practice hearing the voice of God, it becomes easier and easier. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, it says, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. God's voice should get to you, and God's voice should get through you. You know, early, early on, when I was starting out in ministry, I was learning how to hear the voice of God. And for me, it was pretty daunting. It felt like maybe for some of you, as I'm preaching this, it's like, man, that sounds, whew, I don't know. Like, God speaks, that's a big concept. Then me hearing God speaks, that's a bigger concept. Me speaking for God, that's even a bigger. So I was in that place, and I was walking through this, and, and I got invited to preach at my first camp. I was a teenager, and I was going to a summer camp and preaching to other teenagers, and uh, I was nervous. And uh, so I, I, I prayed, and I fasted, and I'm like, man, God, what am I going to say? I worked way too long on this message that honestly probably wasn't very good, probably wasn't even theologically sound, but, it, but I put a lot of prayer into it, and I, I prayed, and I prepared, and I, and I preached this message, and I prayed this prayer before I went. I said, God, if you can use anybody, like I know you can, Please use me. And I don't know what I'm doing up there. But if you could use me, use me. And so I, I'm preaching this, this message that I, I, I worked really hard on. And, and, and as I'm preaching, I feel two things going on in me at the same time. I have this one conversation, which is the message that I've rehearsed and I preach. While at the same time, I feel this compassion in my heart towards this group of teenagers. And I hear this conversation in my head. Two conversations. The conversation of the message I've preached and now this conversation of these, this other train of thought that's this clear thoughts of communication of compassion towards this group of kids. Specifically, there was a girl that was right up in the front. And so I have an altar call. They all come forward. This girl comes right to the front. And so I'm standing there and I hear this clear but what, what I now know now to be the voice of God, I hear the voice of God say to me to tell her, tell her that she is my Esther. She is my Esther, and I've called her, and she is mine. And I'm like, honestly, I've grown up, grown up in church, and I'm like, that seems kind of like a cliche church word. You know, it's like call for such a time as this, Esther. It's like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a male, and I've gotten that word. I've been in church so long. You know, like... <laughs> It's, I don't want to give that word. You're my Esther. You're called for such a time as this. And I'm battling. I got this conversation. Finally, I'm like, okay, fine. 
So I was like, hey, stop. I was like, hey, hey, you know, I, don't, I, think, I think God's speaking to me. And uh, let me just tell you, you're God's, you're God's Esther. And you're called for such a time as this. And she begins to weep, crumples and falls to the floor. And I'm like, man. What? I mean, she must be new to church because I was like, <laughs> everybody's heard that word before. And, and she's weeping. And everybody around, this guy right next to her is like, oh, oh. And, and I'm like, I'm confused. So I'm like, what, what's, what's, what's going on? And he goes, her name is Esther. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so I was dismissing this clear stream of thoughts when God was giving me this girl's name. So, so this is the thing. You hear God's voice more than you think you do. But it's more, it, it, more than us hearing, it's us identifying. Eli couldn't identify the voice of God because he always just stayed in his usual place. Samuel was in the place of presence and he heard God calling to him. But if you know the story, when the voice of God comes to him, he doesn't recognize it as God at first. He's, the Bible says he gets up and he runs to Eli, who's in his usual place, and he says, hey, um, did you call me? And Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel goes back confused. He goes back to presence. But when he goes back to presence, he hears the voice again. So he runs back to Eli. He says, Eli, did you call me? Eli's like, I didn't call you. Go back. So he leaves usual and goes back to presence. In the, in, when he's in presence, he hears the voice again. He goes back to usual. And the usual place, Eli says, it's not me. And then the light comes on for Eli. And he says, oh, because it's been a while for Eli. And he says, hey, Samuel. Go back to the place of presence. And when you hear the voice again, say, here am I. The Bible says that Samuel goes back into the place of presence. And he heard God's voice speak again. And he said, here am I. And that was the beginning, the launch of the prophet Samuel. Yeah. Of a relationship with God where he spoke and he heard for Israel. And I'm going to tell you this. What you hear is determined by where you rest. And if you will never step out of comfort, you will never hear consistently. To hear God's voice, it is not something that you sit in your lazy boy and you collect words. This is how you grow in hearing the voice of God. You have to hear and then you have to obey. If you, this is where... This is where it gets difficult because most of us want to hear, but few of us want to obey. Yeah. Obedience always takes us out of usual and into faith where you have to step out. For me, I didn't want to say Esther. But it was that step of obedience that unlocked God's presence. And now I could recognize God's voice. I was, I was preaching in Las Vegas just a couple months ago. And I was preaching on the prophetic. And I was preaching um, to a, a group of, a large group of people and as I'm preaching, I know this voice now. And as I'm preaching about the prophetic, I hear the Holy Spirit start speaking to me. He's got a word for somebody in the room on the left side. And I see in my mind's eye a picture. This is, this is going to be crazy, okay? I see a picture of a tiger. Like, <laughs> like a tiger. <laughs> Mouth open, claws. Like I saw it. And I'm like, whoa, get behind me, Satan. Right, it's like now I'm seeing crazy things. Like, what did I eat last night? Like, what? Well, I'm trying to preach God's word. And I, ah, I see this picture of a tiger. So now, now I know, though, that voice. So I said, hey, I just want to stop for a second. There's somebody sitting over here, and I don't know what this means to you, but I saw a picture of a tiger. And it, it, looks, like, it looks like this. I, I, showed, I showed it. <laughs> and this guy over here starts to weep. He says, that's me, that's me. And I'm like, what do you mean, that's you? Like, you are a tiger? He goes, I drew that picture last night. I said, what, what do you mean? He goes, I am a photographer for a fighter, professional fighter. His name, his fighting name is Tiger. I drew 
a picture. I, we fly out for Australia for a fight tomorrow morning. But I came today because I knew I needed something from God. And I drew a picture of him last night and I sent it to him. And he sent me the picture and it's the exact same picture that I saw that he drew last night. Listen, this is how crazy God is. La whatever you were doing last night, God knows. So some of you just got excited. Some of you got nervous. God, God knows. But he, he loves you. He, lo he cares about that. So, so what is this thing that we're talking about? This is so powerful. Psalm 139 verse 17 says, How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast are the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. This is God's thoughts towards us. Yeah. This, is, this is God's thoughts towards you. If you were to try to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Do you know what prophecy is or speaking for God? It's the overflow of God's heart of love towards you. Do you, do you know what the, the, the tiger thing was all about? It was the overflow of God's heart of love towards this man. That God wanted him to know that God saw him and that God loved him and that God had a plan for his life. That God saw Esther. That God loved Esther. That God had a plan for Esther's life. All I was was the unknowing conduit trying to obey and trying to listen. But when we hear and when we obey we begin to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Amen. And when we begin to do it as a church, and not just pastors and leaders, but as a church, we begin to unlock the presence of God in our city. I'm telling you, your entire church could, could be turned upside down if the church decided we will not just stay in usual places, coming to church services, singing a couple of songs, listening to a cute message, writing a couple notes, but I am determined that on Monday, I'm going to be in the presence of God. In Tuesday, I'm going to be in the presence of God. On Wednesday, I'm going to be in the presence of God. I am not just someone who comes and spectates at Life Bridge. I am someone who participates in the thing that God is doing. That God's stirring something on the inside of me. God's awakening something on the inside of me to hear from God and to speak for God. When God begins to awaken that, watch out. Yeah. Yeah. I believe this for your church prophetically. Is that there are people that are not in this room that God's drawing to this room. And they're going to be drawn not just by your great building and not just by great leadership. But by people that have real relationship with Jesus. Not just by great marketing and not just by great social media. But by people that have had their lives changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, the best marketing is still the power of a transformed life. The best marketing in our world is still a life that was once lost and is now found. The best way to reach our city is still by your friends and your neighbors seeing visible change in you. You know, I think it's so difficult is that really the aim of our culture and our life, so much of our life, is to be comfortable. If I got someone come up to the keys, I'm going to begin to close. And I just think that sometimes we miss out on all God has for us because our aim is not him. Our aim is comfort. Yeah. And, and because our aim is usual, we lose vision. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. If our aim was him, we would abound with vision. Yeah. Right. But because our aim is comfort, we lack vision. It says, Eli was in his usual place and his eyes... We're becoming weak, so weak that he could barely see. Some of you came in tonight and you don't even know why you're here. And you're thinking, man, I don't have a lot of vision. I don't have a lot of purpose. It's probably because you've been in some usual. But tonight, God is going to lovingly and gently push you out of usual places so that you can get in. This is what's really cool. This is a presence place. You get to the presence place, anything's possible. There's an atmosphere that's been cultivated here by people that have prayed, people that have worshipped, and people that have sown. In that atmosphere, in that atmosphere, anything is possible. Bodies can be healed. 
Darkness has to leave. Bondage has to be broken. I saw just in the spirit some people that walked in with just literally like supernatural like demonic attack over your life and it just it breaks when you come into this room because there there's an atmosphere an atmosphere what does that mean atmosphere it's just the presence of God and it's so weird the presence of God no it's weird if the presence of God wasn't here your your presence is here because you're here my presence is here because I'm here and please God let your presence be here because that means he's here we, we get too religious well, I think it's weird that God speaks. I think it's really weird to give your, your life to a God that can't speak. And that's crazy. Sometimes people cry. You're giving your entire life to a God that doesn't have the, the, the ability to touch you in such a way that it affects your emotions. So you're somewhat emotional. You're, you're giving your entire life to a God that doesn't have the ability to speak. I think you're crazy. I'm giving my all to a God that's so powerful, so magnificent, so loving, so kind, that he doesn't speak. The prophetic is not something I'm going to expose all your sin. The prophetic in the New Testament is the overflow of God's heart of love. It says, I love you so much, and I'm thinking about you so much, I want to tell you. Hey, Esther, you're called for such a time as this. Hey, tiger guy, I saw you last night when you were drawing that picture. I got a plan for you. People in the room. You know, I was praying this morning and the Holy Spirit spoke to me that somebody in the room, you have a you have a, a slipped disc in your back that God's gonna heal tonight. Slipped, slipped disc. Either you hurt your back slipping or it's actually a slipped disc. I just have I just kept on hearing slip. And you're here right now tonight and you're you're gonna get healed. Well, that's weird. That's not weird. That that's where Christianity gets really fun. Because this, well, why would God, why would God call me out like that? Well, A, God wants to heal you. It's just cool. B, God wants you to know that he knows. He knows about the little things. He knows about the things that hurt you. That was my fault. I, it doesn't matter. God knows. He loves you. Anybody right now, you just say, yeah, that's me. I, I've got the, I've got the, I slipped and hurt my back or I have a slipped disc in my back. Is it you? On, on Monday? What's your name? Paula, can I pray for you? Yes. Just, just stand up just right where you are. Lord, I thank you for Paula. Thank you for your hand on her life. So we said this is the reason a word of knowledge comes is, is A, to, because God wants to do something in, in your life. He wants to heal your back. But then also, God wants you to know that he knows, right, that he, that he sees you. So Paula, God sees you. He calls that out. He knows, he knows this because he knows you. So, Lord, thank you for your hand on Paula. Lord, thank you for the work that you're doing in her life. We speak to her back right now, and we say, be made whole in the name of Jesus. Pain, we tell you to go. We command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Healing come from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Life Bridge is a house of miracles. It's a place where we house the presence of God. This isn't a usual place. This is a presence place. Lord, touch her now by the power of your Holy Spirit. God's doing something um, in, in your life relationally. I saw, I saw two relationships that the enemy was trying to sever, and it was like it was tangled. I saw the Holy Spirit untangling uh, relationships that had been tangled, and, uh, and, and it, was, it was almost like you were looking at them, and it was like there is no way it could be untangled. But I saw the Holy Spirit just working to untangle things that looked like it was impossible to be untangled. So, Lord, thank you for the work that you're doing in the relationships. I, I saw the enemy uh, had stolen like three years of your life. And it was like three years of joy, three years of fulfillment, three years. You, you're behind where you think you should be because of some things that happened. And, and I, I heard the Holy Spirit just lovingly remind you that he's going to accelerate this next season to make sure that any ground that you've lost will not be lost. You won't be behind in any area that you feel like you've been behind in. God's going to accelerate in this next season. He's going to restore. He's a God of restoration and a God of redemption. Lord, so touch her now. God's doing a, just a, a miracle in your mind. 
just saw God just doing something in your mind, just like this, this healing word. There's a peace that's coming over your mind, the way that you think, just like a settledness that God's bringing in your heart. You don't have to be flighty anymore. It's like God's bringing a settledness to you. Lord, thank you for that maturity. Lord, that spiritual maturity that's already in there, but Lord, you're just, you're just stirring in Paula in the name of Jesus. Now just take a deep breath. Power of God's coming on you. One, two, three. Touch her now in the name of Jesus. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Spirit that comes on you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The presence of God's here right now. So awesome. Now, it would be really easy just to kind of like ride the momentum of like, man, God. But I also want to like kind of just stop and break the atmosphere. And I, I'm doing it on purpose because I want you to also realize that it's not all like super mysterious and spiritual. Like it's easier if we just stay in this like, wow, God's. But also it's like, we could stop. The, stop for a second. Just stop playing just for a second. So we could just stop. <laughs> And it's okay, God's presence is still here. I just, I just want to help us because the, the presence of God's not always just the, the atmosphere. Atmosphere is powerful. It's important because we create a place where our, fo- our minds can really focus on the Lord. Okay, you can play again because I like it. <laughs> but I want to help you understand that on mo- tomorrow, tomorrow morning, as you go to work, you're not going to have him on the keys, un- unfortunately. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't mind that. You can like, follow me around. And- I need to pray for a couple groups of people. Um, in the beginning, I talked about notifications and my notifications that I, I got all these missed calls and all these missed texts. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me about three different types of, of three areas that I feel like God wants to bring freedom tonight. One is that for some people, you have just been missing calls. This represents people that have been distracted by other voices so you've missed God's it's been all of these other voices it's not it's not bad it's just like the voices of the world or voices of people have been so loud it's just been hard to hear God's then I then I heard the Lord speak to me that some people that you've been really uh, been plagued by prank calls prank calls this is this represents those who have been listening to the wrong voice or the wrong narrative. So this is this is the voice of the enemy that keeps on telling you you're never gonna make it. You should have never never married them. You should get out while you can. You're not needed here. Why are you even on this earth? Why are you living? Though your family would be better without you. That's a prank call. We can keep on going. If I'm not hitting it yet. It's that, that's a prank call. That's a lie of the enemy that we've got to identify and we've got to get rid of. Then there's dropped calls. You ever been going into a bad zone? You know, you drop a call. This represents those who've had bad reception with God or something in your life has blocked it. So sometimes you need to come into an atmosphere like this and, and you just need breakthrough so that you can just have clear receptivity from God. It's just like something's blocking your signal. Some of you, you like, your desire for God is so strong and it's just like, I just can't hear. I don't know what's going on. I'm just like, it's just like something's, but you just need breakthrough tonight. And God's going to give you breakthrough. So I'm, I'm going to ask in, in each of those areas, I'm going to ask you just to respond. Now, the, the reason we respond is that when you respond, there's not something spiritual, super spiritual about saying, that's me. But there's something very spiritual about, spiritual about the faith that it takes to say it's me. Does that make sense? So when you stand up, when you raise your hand, it's not like, oh, yeah, now I'm going to get free because I raised my hand. But the faith that says, yeah, that's me, God, and I want to be free, there's something really powerful about that. And so if, if you feel like you've, you've been having some missed calls where it's just like there's been distraction, you haven't been able to hear the voice of God, you've been having some prank calls where it's just like any of these areas, prank calls, where it's just there's been a narrative of the enemy that you've been hearing that you want to stop, or you feel like there's been a block in your signal, any of those, I'm just going to ask you, would you stand? It's probably going to be a lot of us, I know. But just, just stand. I won't pray for you in that area. And I just want you just to turn your attention to the Lord right now. And if you feel comfortable, can you just lift your hands to heaven? I want to pray for you. Holy Spirit, I pray right now for these 
Lord, some missed calls, some prank calls, some drop calls. Lord, whatever the area is, I ask by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would speak to each and every one of us, that you would open our ears to hear your voice. Lord, we cancel the assignment of the enemy, Lord, that's tried to get in the way of us hearing your voice. Lord, we release the voice of heaven. Lord, we release the, the voice uh, that's so loving and so clear right now in the name of Jesus. I ask for breakthrough Lord, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough hearing. The ability to hear your voice. Lord, stop every narrative of the enemy. I break every negative voice, every demonic voice now in the name of Jesus. Every reoccurring voice that keeps on coming into our ears, into our minds, that says something anti or different than what you're saying. We break it now in the name of Jesus. Any blockage to us hearing your voice, we come against it now. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. We break it now. We break it now. We break it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we all just stand together now? And in band, if, if, if you're around, can you come forward as well? And Can we just focus on the Lord for a second? I just have a couple words on my heart that I want to release. And, God's doing something in this room right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Maybe for some of you, it, it's, it's different for you just to pursue the Lord. Can I encourage you to just step out of usual and just practice hearing the voice of God, what God is saying. There's a young lady, you're, you're, you have a white shirt on. Yeah, God's, God's hands on you. I, I, I heard the Holy Spirit just say that, that he's about to bring you to a season of promotion. It's, it's as if, like, you have been in this faithful season where you have been faithful for the Lord, faithful with your family, walking before God, but there is this acceleration season. And I saw something in the area of business, some idea or some venture that, that you are, are, are stepping into and God just smiling on it. And I, I felt like what God was saying is it's going to be way bigger than you thought it was going to be, but it's also going to bring more joy than you thought it would. Bigger than you thought it would be, but it's going to bring more joy. And, and I, I saw even um, as you stepped out, maybe even there was like some hesitancy of, is it time to go all in or is it time to, and I just heard the, just, the Lord just, just moving you forward. Just, it was as if he was directing your steps. I, I, is, are you guys married? Married? Sir, I, I, I saw just over your family like a supernatural protection. Do you have kids? Yeah, I, how many kids? Do you get, I saw this supernatural protection and, and there's something really beautiful that God's doing in your family. And uh, I, I saw God putting some roots down deep where it was like you were unmovable. And I, I saw from, I saw you like in three different places, like, like moving, moving, moving. But it was like God was just putting down roots and saying you're in a safe place. And it was like, it was just a hedge of protection around you, your marriage, and your kids. It was like God was just solidifying things. There were some things that you had been worried about. That you just, the threats were gone. You didn't have to worry anymore. And, and there is about to be a season of joy, a season of prosperity, a season of blessing. Uh, specifically, you have a daughter. You have a daughter? Is she your oldest? Yeah, your old your your oldest daughter. I, I saw the Lord um, at a very young age encountering her and uh, in a really sweet way. And uh, it was almost like the Lord was saying, you don't have to worry about her, that her heart is, is going to be just completely open to the things of God and that God's going to just lead her into the perfect places and the perfect relationships, the perfect seasons at the perfect time. Lord, I just thank you for this family. There is such a work happening. Lord, you're leading them. There's a hedge of protection around them. Lord, you, there's just a smile over them. And so, Lord, to touch them right now in the name name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord there's a, there's a young lady in the you're in the front you uh yeah you you're, <laughs> you're like me um there was a lady up here I saw you, I was in worship and you I think you handed like them some Kleenexes or something and the Holy Spirit like just like spoke to me so clearly that that God's God's hand is on you to minister and it was it was it was like God was, <laughs> what I saw was, it's, 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 it's kind of funny, but the God was just giving you almost like laser focus on projects and people where God was going to put an assignment in front of you and you, God, you were going to know what to do and how to do it. It was like, there's a person, you knew what to do and how to do it. And it was things that not everybody could do. 
And in your mind, it seemed easy, like anybody could do this. But for you, it, it for, but in other people's minds, it's not easy. It's easy to you, but it's not to others. God's given you a gift to connect with people and to help people. And I saw this anointing just increasing you in the area of ministry. I'm not saying that you're, you're, you're called to full-time ministry as much as there is a ministry that God's bringing you into of, of ministering to people, of helping people along. And uh, God's gonna give you laser focus. Are, are you guys connected? Are you married? You always have to ask, them. Don't, don't know these days. What's your name, sir? Micah. There's something like just so sweet about you guys. It's 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 really awesome. The the anointing that's 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 on you as a family, and um, Mike, I, I just I just saw the Lord um, like giving you this silent strength. It was it was like you were just unmovable, and um, I saw the Lord taking you on just a journey of depth spiritually, where. Um, it, it was like maybe from the outside, people wouldn't even know how deep you are. But there was this deep well with the Lord that God was just establishing with you. This deep well of experience and this deep well of encounter. And uh, it, it might not be as evident to other people as maybe some other people's are, but but I, I just felt like God said that, that he saw the depth of relationship and and, and the, um, the deep well of encounter that's in you. But I, I heard just like the cry of God to take you both deeper. So Lord, just thank you in this next season that you're gonna take this couple even deeper. Lord, you're taking them even deeper. Lord, you're taking them even deeper. I just heard the Lord say, you can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him. You can trust him as he says step, as he says go, as he says lead, as he says take people underneath your wing. He, you, can, you can trust him. Um, I saw like one area where uh, there was like, um, I'm trying to think of, what I, what I get in my mind, like what I hear from the Lord is like a break of trust and, and there was like a, like a hurt or some type of break of trust. And I just heard the Lord just saying he's healing that area. And um, so uh, let, me, let me say this, I'll, I'll say it to everybody here. So when, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're get, when you're speaking like this and, and you're, you do your best to hear and obey, right? So like they gotta judge the word for whatever it is. And I've never met these guys before they seem nice, so hopefully they don't throw anything or whatever. Uh, but as as you're obeying and, and and as you're praying, sometimes you will sense just compassion. You sense the heart of God, and and so I I sense like this attack of the enemy just in the area of the ability to really trust people, and um, and and whether it's I don't I'm not saying it's demonic or whatever, but just like it's to keep you from your full potential. But I saw, I saw like the love of God just like keep, excuse me, pushing you into areas where you just had to trust God and you had to trust people, trust God, trust people. And I just saw you looking back in like 10 years and just saying, God's been so faithful. God's been so good. God's shown up again and again and again. God has shown himself faithful. Lord, so thank you for your faithfulness in this couple. Thank you for their, your faithfulness in their family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you, are you guys in ministry? No? Have you thought about ministry? Should I, should I ask that in public? Uh, there's like this, there's a ministry thing on you. That you just need to, you just need to pray about. Maybe it's not vocational, like, like, but, but, but just... Maybe just lean into that because there is a ministry grace that's over you to, to, to just be pillars in the house of God. You're pillars in the house of God. My brother right, right here, God's hands all over you. I saw you as soon as I came in the door, my eyes like went straight to you. And I just, I just felt the, I felt the, um, the gratitude of God for being a man that he can trust in the house of God. And I, I, just, I just felt like um, I needed to just say thank you. And I heard the Lord just saying thank you for being faithful and for being diligent and for serving his house and for serving his people. I, I heard the Lord say that as you've served other people, at times you've even neglected some of the things that you've really desired in your heart. And I, I saw God uh, doing something supernaturally in your own home 
with your own family. And it was you had been so, so good about serving and loving and praying for other people. But I saw the Lord saying, you have taken care of my house, and I'm going to take care of yours. And so there, there is a prayer. There is something that you put before God. And, and I heard the Lord say, he's heard the prayer. He's heard your heart cry. And to, as you've been faithful with his, with, with his house, God is being faithful with your house. Lord, touch this man of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless him, his family, and his house in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I feel like we should do this. And y'all snuck up here. It's good. Can, can we just worship just for a moment? And, and this is what I want to ask. Can we, can we try to all do this? This is fun. Can we try to all do this? Let's not just be usual worshipers. Let's not just be usual. Let's just step together just towards Jesus in a place of presence. And, and, and let's just let's let this be a moment where we're just saying, we're not going to just have this be the usual little response. But we're going to step into a place of presence saying, God, we, we want you. We, we really need you. We're, we're breaking up with usual. What's your name right here? Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Right here. Rihanna? What's happening right now? Come, come, come right here. Are you in the youth ministry here? Yeah? What, what grade are you in? Going in the 10th? What's happening tonight? You feel the presence of God? No? What are you crying about? You want to? It's awesome. That's awesome. Lift your hands. God loves that. Lord, thank you for this woman of God. Lord, thank you that you love her so much. Thank you for that desire to be known by you, to feel you, to sense you. Your word says, blessed are the hungry, for they will be filled. So I pray for the power of your Holy Spirit from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let her never be the same again. Take a deep breath. Power of God's coming on you. One, two, three. Touch her now in the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus that's the power of God that's the power of God that's the power of God right through her now in the name of Jesus right through her now in the name of Jesus more 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 never the same God never the same God in the name of Jesus just receive that just receive that never the same in the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord let's just worship for a moment I might talk over you but let's just worship just for a moment Lord we worship you in this place we worship you come can you lift your hands come on just step out of usual for a second Lord we worship you we worship you Jesus we worship Go ahead and sing. We worship you, Jesus. Well, just use your voice for a moment. Just worship God. Come on, no more usual. The power of the Holy Ghost comes on you now. Never the same. You're hungry and you will be filled. Lord, mark him with the power of your Holy Spirit. Let the fire of your Holy Spirit come on him now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. More, 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 more. He loves you so much, bro. He loves you so much. 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 Come on, just use your voice for a moment. Just use your voice for a moment. We're stepping out of usual. It's you, Jesus.
over Life Bridge and over this city. Lord, we prophesy a move of your Holy Spirit. Lord, a fire of revival that starts in this church. Lord, that ripples to every church in this city. Lord, I thank you that the spirit of religion and religiosity is broken. I thank you that a wave of revival and awakening is hitting this county in the name of Jesus. I thank you for a fresh anointing that's coming on Pastor Brian and Pastor Megan in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that their hearts Lord, their minds, Lord, are erupting with vision as they spend time in your presence. Lord, I thank you that you're drawing people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Lord, I thank you that songs are coming out of this house that are being sung, sung all over this state. Lord, I thank you that literally there will not be one person that speaks for this house, but Lord, collectively as a church, we will hear your voice and obey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That wall that's been being hit in this city, but it feels like it won't move, it breaks today in the name of Jesus. Whatever that opposition has been, it breaks today in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord makes room for the work of the Lord. The opposition breaks in the name of Jesus. What has been difficult, what has been, what has been, what has taken force, what has met resistance, it breaks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare the work of the gospel will be easy. It will be met with ease. It will be met with acceleration. It will go forward with force in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm about to turn it over to Pastor Brian here in a second. Just turn your attention to the Lord. Holy Spirit, come, come, come. Open our ears to hear your voice. 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 Hear your voice. I, I feel like... There's another young person in the room that, I think it was Rhiannon, is that what your name was? Rhiannon? That you, you kind of like feel what she feels is like, you want to feel God, but you don't feel God. I want to pray for you, if that's you. You're a young person in the house, I want to feel God, but I don't feel God. It might be one, it might be a couple of you, where are you at? Just come forward, just real quickly. I, I want to feel God, I just, I just don't. My desire is to feel Him. It's awesome, bro. It's awesome. Anybody else, you can come as well. Take another step forward, bro. It's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's awesome. What's your name, bro? What's your name, bro? Carla. Just come a little closer, man. God's hands on you, bro. He loves you so much. The power of God's going to touch you. You're going to feel him tonight. I break shame. I break condemnation. I break every spirit of oppression that's tried to come on you. I break the spirit of depression and discouragement that's tried to weigh you down. And we release the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. The joy of the Lord will be your light, will be your guide. The Holy Spirit sets you free tonight. And the power of God flows through you now. The fire of the Holy Ghost comes through you now. Set him free now in the name of Jesus. Set him free now in the name of Jesus. Lord, show yourself strong to this man of God in the name of Jesus. Show yourself strong to this man of God in the name of Jesus. More, 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 more. He loves you so much. Lord, release your love. Release your love. Release your love right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bro, that's the power of God. It came on you even as you got out of your chair and started walking up here. Before anybody laid hands on you, it started coming on you just in your response to God that you wanted Him. Lord, touch Him now. Take a deep breath. The power of God's coming through you. One, two, three. Touch Him now. Now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, touch Him now. Set Him free for our sister and we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit come on her now from the top of her head to the soles of her feet that desire is all that you need 
It's all that you need. It's not something that I can give or that we can give. You already came with what you needed. It's that you wanted to be encountered by God. Take a deep breath. The power of God is going to come on you. One, two, three. Lord, touch her now in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I break the lie of the enemy. I cancel that narrative that keeps on speaking into your ears. I break night terrors in the name of Jesus. We tell that dark presence to go from your room. It goes now in the name of Jesus. You will sleep in peace. We tell that conversation to stop, that, that, that shame conversation, the worthless conversation. I tell it to go in the name of Jesus. We cancel the lie of the enemy and we release the truth of God. It's the lie of the enemy that's kept you from feeling the love of God. We release his truth now in the name of Jesus. We release his truth now in the name of Jesus. You're God's child. You're God's daughter. You're his. He loves you. He called you. He chose you. We release that truth now. In the name of Jesus, touch the Lord, touch the Lord, touch the Lord, Lord, now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, freedom come, freedom come, now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's it, 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 it comes now, 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 in the name of Jesus, that now. We thank you, Lord. Can I pray for Pastor Brian? Can I pray for you and Pastor May? Lord, I pray right now for our leaders, for our pastors. Lord, thank you for the anointing that is on them. We honor. Lord, we don't honor their personalities, their age, their style. Lord, we honor the gift of God that's on them as the leaders and the pastors of this house. I thank you for the anointing of God that rests on them. Lord, it's not just by happenstance or or coincidence that they're the leaders of this house. It's by divine appointment and by divine selection. So we ask now for a fresh anointing to come on them and a fresh grace for this next season in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for supernatural favor that everything they do prospers. Lord, that whatever they begin to start, whatever endeavor that they work to obey you in, Lord, it would have the smile and the favor of God on it. I speak favor with city uh, city uh, employees. I speak favor over with politicians. I speak favor with people of influence. I speak favor, Lord, in any area, Lord, in the city, Lord, that would unlock deeper levels of influence to see a wave of salvation hit this area in the name of Jesus. Divine strategy, divine concepts, divine systems, and I also pray, God, that you would gather people around them. I pray for mighty men of God to gather around Pastor Brian, to hold his arms up, to love him, to honor him. Lord, to believe in the vision that's in him and the anointing that's on him. I pray for mighty women of God to come around Pastor May that would stand with her, that would believe in her, that would honor the gift of God that's in her and on her. Lord, that would not be jealous of her, compare themselves with her, compete with her, but would honor the gift of God that's on her. Lord, that would celebrate the creative anointing that's in her. Lord, and I pray that you would use these to, to shake this city with the power of the, the with the power and the gospel. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, not just to fill buildings, to shake the city. The anointing to shake the city, disruptors, holy disruptors, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for them now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, can you just thank God for his presence? Thank God for your pastors. Come on, it's amazing.